Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on our Lotus Elise. It's a 2007 and we are changing the intake cam shaft because it's pretty worn. And so we have the valve cover off. We've got the under trays off. We've got the right side wheel liner on the rear out so that we can get more access to the belts right over there. We're gonna be replacing it with this camshaft. It's an upgraded camshaft stock grind, so it still works with the stock tune, but it's hardened, so it'll prevent any more cam wiping issues. This is from BOE. So once you get to this point, uh, first thing you wanna do is remove the serpentine belt. And if you take a look under here, there's not a lot of room to fit a 19 millimeter socket. So I just used this jack handle and we just jacked up the tensioner um, shock. It'll slowly, if you do it slowly, uh, you'll be able to kind of put pressure on the tensioner and then you can loosen up the belt. So now I can get this belt off like so. And I didn't have to use a 19 millimeter socket, which could potentially strip the head. So that's where the jack handle is placed. And you can see it's just putting pressure on that little spring. Also, make sure you spin the crank until you get your orange timing chain marks aligned with the gears. So that's that. And then the orange one right here lines up with the exhaust sprocket. There's another uh, indentation on the bottom. Just keep spinning until you get these lined up so that you can put everything back together when you're done. Okay, next thing you want to do is Remove the chain tensioner, which is this piece here. It's two 10 millimeter nuts. And in order to get this out, it's gonna be a tight fit. It won't really wanna fit because of this piece. So what you have to do is you just have to shave off a little bit of this arm over here. Let me see if I can zoom in. So right there, I shaved off a little bit of that arm using a Dremel with a sanding attachment. And that was enough clearance to get this out, just to slide it out. This is the tensioner. Right now it's compressed with the little hanger right here. Uh, but earlier it was like up to here. But yeah, you just push it down, compress it, and then you can put this hanger and then this will be ready for insta reinstallation later. Okay, so we got this exhaust sprocket. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. And you just basically rotate this towards the left. And that allows you to release some of the tension on the chain to get it off of this uh, exhaust rocket and we have our marking right here with black paint along with these two dotted lines that match up to that orange paint so now we can take this off and i'm going to get something to hold this chain so it doesn't fall into the timing cover i'll probably use like zip tie or something to hold it up here then the next thing we want to work on is taking off these bolts here they look like they're 14 mil i'm guessing or 13. you're just going to take all those off and then we can pop the camshaft off Now's your chance to inspect the rocker arms, which is these pads right here. So you just wanna feel the surface if there's any catching on your fingernails. And I'm feeling right now, uh, they feel really smooth, no issues. It's really just the camshaft that had the wear. So we're gonna reuse these rocker arms. But if they were damaged, you definitely wanna change these out. We got the intake cam shaft off and you can see right there, there's the wear and tear. You, when you kind of run your finger through it, you can feel it. And then this one right here as well, you can kind of see right there. So now you can see the two combined. This one is a much harder material. It's made from BOE. It's a stock grind, meaning you don't have to you don't have to tune for it. It's just you use the stock tune with this, but it's more reliable, right? This one is not gonna wipe as often as this one would. So we gotta get this off and then we gotta transfer it over. So we have to unlock it and then put it into this one. Torque it down and then relock it. Let's get started. Breaking it loose. That notch there has to line up with the notch right here. These are five-sided bolts, 
so a normal socket won't work with them because those are six sided. So I'm going to use this, a socket that can conform to any size. Well, let's see if it works. Let's take these bolts off. There's one. There's the spring right there. Ooh, and it's making a messy. Okay, got the plate off. Take your little spring out. Here's the pin that unlocks it, which goes right there. That means that it's locked it's, if it's in that pin. You can kind of rotate it like this. So you want to rotate it that way, 30 degrees clockwise. And then go ahead and then find your alignment, which is the two lined up like so. Once this pin hits in there and locks it into place, then yeah, the gear's locked already. So I'm gonna go rotate it there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put this pin back like so. And then that's pretty much flush. So it should still be able to close it. And then as soon as you rotate this gear, it's gonna go put it into a position where it's locked. So we're gonna take that spring that we saw earlier. You're gonna put it back on the locking pin like that. That way it puts some tension on the locking pin. Then you can take your cover plate and then uh, place it back into position. And remember, try not to rotate the, the gear sp sprocket because it'll lock again and then you're, you're kind of back where you were starting again. So go ahead and just torque these bolts down. Okay, once you've got the four five-sided bolts torqued down, you made sure that it's not locked and you can tell it's locked because this dot right here is going to be lined up with that dot that means that it's locked so right now it's unlocked which means we can put it on the new camshaft torque it down to 40 foot pounds of torque and then we can go in and lock it to get this back into the new camshaft it's going to be a little notch there you want to line that notch up with this indentation it's like a circular one I'll go ahead and do that right now okay and now I'm gonna go ahead and place our bolt in and then torque it down. Again, don't turn it and lock it yet until it's fully torqued. We're gonna do 40 foot pounds of torque. There's 40 foot pounds of torque. Check our lock. Good, we're still not locked. Okay, so now that you torqued it down, you can go ahead and lock the uh, gear now. To lock it, you just turn the gear now it's locked. As soon as you've got these two lined up, the inner dot and the outer dot, your gear is locked. And if you skip this step, you're gonna run into issues with limp mode and stuff. You're never really gonna be able to hit second cams. So very important to unlock this gear before you put it on, torque it down, and then go ahead and relock this sprocket here. Now I can go ahead and torque down those weird five-sided bolts. Now we are ready to install this camshaft back into the engine. Before you do that though, let's go ahead and put a bunch of assembly lube or engine lube because uh, we don't want any more wear on this on the initial startup. All right, so we're applying a generous amount of lube onto these surfaces that are kind of coming in contact with the, the uh, camshaft. I'm also going to lube up this area here. Okay, so basically what I did is I lined up this line to the orange uh, cap and it's also lined up right there. You can see orange to my uh, black painted mark. I painted that one black, but there's actually a little line underneath it that lines up. All right, so now we're gonna torque each of these cam cap bolts to 15 foot-pounds of torque. Good. Last but not least, when you're up here, you wanna replace these lift bolts. They're 10 millimeters. They're known to uh, wear over time, so a couple dollars, not a bad thing to replace them while you're here. They're called lift bolts and they come in pairs. This is the chain tensioner. It's got a little O-ring, which I already lubed up. This is what it looks like when it's fully pressed out. You have to actually kind of compress it back in. 
all the way. And it, it squirts out some oil when you do that. Once it's all the way down, uh, take this little hook and place that hook over it so that it locks it into position. So now that it's locked like that, it's shortened, and then you can go ahead and install it back in. Once you install it back in, we'll figure out a way to unlock this hook so that it puts tension on the chain again, and then we can go put the serpentine belt back on. I just put the chain tensioner back in, and you can see my grinding spot there that I had done to fit that back in. Just a small amount of grinding, and it goes back in and out smoothly. So it helps a lot with doing this job if you have to again later down the line. Torque specs for these bolts I'll show in the screen, but not too tight really. Now we need to go ahead and then unloosen that hook that is holding the tensioner in place so that it can put some tension on the chain. So I just put the tensioner back in and then I spun the engine counterclockwise a little bit, put some tension or some pressure on, in between the two sprockets on the chain and that popped the tensioner free from the hook. So now this chain is under a lot of tension. It's nice and tight. And double check that our timing is still good, which it is. So we're ready to put the serpentine belt back on. All right, so the first startup, here we go. You want to rev it up a little bit to get some oil pressure. A few moments later. All right, so I just finished installing the camshaft. We got the valve cover back on. While it was off, I also painted it red. And I think the red looks really awesome. It's like a gloss red color. It looks really good with the carbon fiber parts that's already included in the car, including this Lotus oil cap. And you can see the interior matches the center console, which is red, the steering wheel, just everything matches perfectly. So that's why we wanted to paint the valve cover red as well. It just gives it something to pop. So very happy with that so far. And you can still see it through the hood right there. This is an S3 hatch, I believe. Very cool. So we'll keep uh, you guys updated on how these cams wear out. So far, we're just gonna go for a drive. The break-in procedure is to try not to hit second cam for at least uh, 200 miles but some people say up to a thousand miles which is pretty dang long you do want to do that proper procedure before you even do anything you have to start it and then rev it to about 1500 rpm or 2000 rpm and hold it for 30 minutes it's a very long time but it's very important when you're trying to break into new cams thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys on the next video have a good evening